So in this video, I want to talk about custom events. Things like start or update are events that are called by Unity automatically. Custom events, however, as the name suggests, are created by the developer and can be called whenever needed. What makes custom events particularly useful, in my opinion, is that code from one flow graph can now call or run code on a second flow graph. Now, why this is good may not be immediately obvious, but this allows code to be decoupled or at least less entangled than it might otherwise be. As your project grows, the code base can become harder to maintain, and one change over here can break code in a totally different part of a game. One way to think about events is that it's a part of your code yelling, hey, play a sound effect, and another part of the code may or may not be listening for that. If a part of your code is listening for play a sound effect, then it will respond and run some code. If no one is listening, then nothing happens and most importantly, nothing breaks. As a side note, the custom events in Bolt version one are not full-fledged C-sharp events, but those will be coming in Bolt two and are more generic and should be even more useful. Let's take a quick look at a simple and admittedly silly use case, but shows how custom events work. On the left of the flow graph, I have a start event that will get called as soon as I push play. The flow then goes to a custom event trigger. This unit contains two important pieces of information. The first is the name of the event, and the second is the game object that has the event. If either of these are incorrect, the event won't get called, but also no error will be thrown. On the right is the custom event itself. Notice that the unit is green, just like other events such as start and update. When the trigger runs, this event will be called and the flow will start from there. Notice that the name of the events does need to match. When I press play, the event simply prints a message to the console when it gets called. One of my personal favorite uses of events is communicating with UI elements. For example, if you want a text element to update, rather than using an update event so the text updates every frame, which can be bad for performance, you can create and call a custom event only when the text needs to get updated. This is better on so many levels. Events can also allow your code base to be smaller. They allow code that is on one flow graph or one object to be used by any object in the scene rather than cutting and pasting the code into each and every flow graph or object that needs that code. This can also make debugging easier since the code is in one place and only needs to be edited in that one place. A common use of this programming pattern is often with the implementation of managers. In this video, which is partially inspired by a viewer's comment, I'm going to create a simple sound effects manager that will contain some UI style sound effects that will get played when a button is pressed. So let's go ahead and get started. I've created a simple scene that consists of just UI elements. The three buttons in the middle of the screen are what I will use to trigger the sound effects. The first thing I'm going to create is an empty object and I'll name it Sound Effects Manager or SFX Manager. I'll add both a flow machine as well as an audio source component. This audio source will play all the sound effects and if you need multiple sound effects to play at the same time, you will need multiple audio sources. Also toggle off the play on awake as this simply isn't needed in this case. Next, I'll create a flow macro and call it sound effects manager. I'll also drag this flow macro into the flow machine on the sound effects manager object. In the flow graph, I'll create a custom event unit and give the event the name play click. Then dragging out the flow, I'll search for audio source play and select a one shot option. This will play a sound effects clip through a given audio source. In this case, the audio source is on self. I've downloaded a free pack of UI sound effects to use in this video. I'll include a link in the video description below. In the pack, I'll drag in a click sound effect and connect the unit to the play one shot unit. And this is all I need to do on the receiving end of the event. Next, I need to create a flow macro for the button that will trigger this event. I'll create a new flow macro and call it play click. I'll also add a flow machine to the play click button and drag the flow macro into it. The flow macro needs to respond to the click of a button. So I'll first add an on button click event and then drag out the flow and search for custom event trigger. In the custom event trigger, I need to type the name of the event I'm calling, which is play click. I also need to tell the unit what game object the event is on. Now there are multiple ways to do this, but my favorite is to create a scene variable that will hold a reference to the game object, which in this case is the sound effects manager object. I can then drag in the variable and connect it to the custom event trigger. And that's all it takes. I'll push play and give it a test. Now when I click the button, I can hear a click sound effects. Pretty simple, pretty slick. I can repeat the process for the play slide button. Since the code is nearly identical, I'll simply duplicate the event in the sound effects manager. I'll also create some boxes around the code to make it easier to read and follow along. Making sure to change the name of the event as well as the audio clip. Next, I'll duplicate the play click flow macro, renaming it play slide, 
and I'll drop it into a flow machine on the play slide button. In the flow macro, I need to change the name of the event that we're trying to call. With that, I can easily test the code and see that both the play click and the play slide buttons are working correctly. Now this may seem like a lot of work, but if you have several buttons in your scene that all need to play a sound effect, especially if it's the same sound effect, this can save a good amount of time. It also means that if you want to change the audio clip that plays when you click on a button, there's only one place to change it, and that's in the sound effects manager. This structure gets more useful the more you use it. Now you may have noticed that the custom event has another parameter called arguments. These are super useful. These allow an object to be passed from the trigger to the event, and then the event has a reference to that object and can do something with it. In this case, I'm going to create a third event that has an audio clip argument. I'll duplicate the play slide flow macro and rename it play custom. In the flow macro, I'll change the arguments from 0 to 1, which you can see adds an input to the unit. I'm then going to drag in an audio clip and connect it to this new input node. I'll also change the name of the event to play custom. And I almost forgot, I need to add a flow machine to the play custom button and drop the new flow macro into it. Next, in the sound effects manager flow macro, I need to create a new event. I'll start by duplicating and renaming the play click event. I'll then change the number of arguments from zero to one, which creates a new output node. This node gets connected to the audio clip input of the audio source play one shot unit. I can then delete the audio clip unit. Testing the new code, I can hear that all three buttons now work correctly. This last event is the most general, but it can allow any flow macro in the scene to play a sound effect without needing to get an audio source on the object itself. And there are lots and lots of uses for this. So there you go, I've created three custom events as well as a very simple sound effects manager. The code takes a bit more thought, but can result in better code and often less code to manage. In the next video, I'll combine the concepts of super units and custom events to create a system that allows for return values, much like functions do in text-based programming languages. And I know I said that in the last video, but it's really gonna happen this time. So if you found this video useful or helpful, please think about hitting the subscribe and like buttons. If you wanna go even further in supporting the channel, check out a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.